A question that often comes up with regards to the tracer workflow is how to combine data from multiple Revit model exports um, in a single view. Um, the tracer workflow that you can download from our website um, provides the ability to take a single Revit document and translate it into a relational database. So if you have multiple models of, of a project, you're exporting multiple data sets for each model. And you can see in this Power BI data set, um, I am connecting into two models, uh, one designated model A and one designated model B. Uh, because they're both using the tracer export, the structure of these tables is identical. You can see that we have a collection of, for example, mesh geometry from one model um, and a collection of mesh geometry from another model. However, if I activate the tracer 3D visual, I can only um, assign this visual to one collection of meshes or the other. So for example, I can take this mesh field over into the geometry field, um, and it's going to, uh, as expected, display uh, the meshes from this model. But what if I also wanted to have the geometry from model A um, in this view? Um, I can't simply take this mesh um, data and drag it in. Um, like so. Um, basically the visual uh, doesn't know what to do with uh, essentially two unrelated um, uh, mesh fields um, in the same visual. So what I want to do uh, in this case is use Power BI's tools to create an appended data set that combines data from both of these. Um, and, and then I can use that data to create an aggregated view here. So what I'm going to do is jump over into the transform data um, uh, editor um, in Power BI, and we're going to do a little bit of data wrangling um, to combine these data sets together. So you can see that when I'm in the transform data editor, I have my model A connection and I have my model B connection. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to provide a custom column in each of these data sets that indicates uh, which um, data set they belong to. So I can kind of view all elements for model A and view all elements for model V when everything becomes aggregated together. So I'm simply going to go to the add column section of the editor here and I'm going to uh, go to a custom column and I'm going to create a column uh, that is going to be called model. Um, and for this data set, model A, I want this column to basically have an ID of one. So I'm just going to enter in one here. And that's going to create a new column that creates an you know, itemizes each record as being assigned to model one. And then I'm going to go to model B here, and I'm going to add a new custom column. And I'm also going to name this model, and I'm going to call this number two. Um, so what that's going to do is it's going to produce an added column that is going to itemize each record of this model with two. Now all I need to do at this point is combine these tables together into a single view. So I'm going to go back to the Home tab and you can see that there is what's called an Append Queries um, button here. And if I do the drop down, I can say I want to append these um, two queries, these are called queries um, of these two databases together as a new set of records. So I'm going to go ahead and append as new. And uh, you'll have this ability to concatenate uh, rows from two or more tables into a single table. You could have, right now we have two tables here. Um, so what I might do is just say model A um, and then model B. Um, if you have three or more tables, it exposes a new interface uh, like this. So you might have um, available tables that you're then adding together. So you can uh, um, you know, do more than two models, of course. Uh, but for now, I can just do two models and I'm going to hit OK. And what this is going to do is it's going to um, uh, combine these together and with Power BI there is a bit of a security setting here um, wherein it's going to say hey you're intermingling two database connections do you want to do that? Um, there are some settings in Power BI that let you turn off this warning but it's, it's okay to just um, let this go uh, and save it since we're not doing anything controversial really we're just combining uh, two data sources together. Um, so it's uh, now going through this process of creating a basically a master table um, between model uh, A and model B. And it's now kind of a table called append one. And maybe what I want to do here is just simply rename this to 
element. So now um, we have element model A, we have element model B, and then we have all elements together um, in a single table. So I'm going to go ahead and close and apply this, and it's going to take me back to the Power BI environment, and you can see it's now um, just refreshing our data. Um, it's uh, loading in model A, model B, and then a single um, element table. So now we have a combination table here that has all of the, the elements listed. And now if I go and activate my Tracer 3D Viewer, um, we can enlarge in this. And I'm going to go ahead and take the mesh information and drop it into the Geometry tab from our combined element table. And what it's going to do is it's going to now use records from both Model A and Model B uh, together. And it's going to display them uh, both uh, concurrently. And one of the reasons why um, I added in that um, model column into both is that we can now create slicers and other um, uh, techniques to view one model or another. So for example, I might take a slicer out and I'm going to connect it to my created model column. And we can see that we have uh, uh, the ID for one and ID for two. So if I only wanted to see um, model B, which is has the ID of two, I can click on that and it's going to filter my view and only show me the elements from model B. Um, likewise, if I jump to model A, it's going to turn on uh, that information as well. And of course, uh, as I was uh, demonstrating before, you can see these both uh, together um, if you uh, ch if you choose to see uh, both one and two kind of overlaid on top of each other, of course. Um, the other thing that this ID column allows you to do is take advantage of the view um, capability of this 3D visual. So you can see that we have this view input here. Um, so let's say I wanted to create a multi-view selection where I would see model A and model B in parallel with each other. So maybe I'll take this model uh, input and put it into the view input. And this visual is then going to refresh and it's going to show me two parallel views of the model side by side. Um, so on one side, you're going, to show, you're going to see model A and on the other side, you're going to see model B. So once this is done processing, you'll see that we now have um, the kind of architectural model in this case in parallel with the structural model. So we can kind of see them side by side. So hopefully this technique is useful um, when working with multiple models um, in a single Power BI report. Um, we're able to connect to multiple model exports uh, from Power BI um, that uh, to these data sets that have been produced from Revit. We can then use Power BI's uh, transform data capabilities to combine those data sets together uh, into a single um, list of elements that can be um, used in this capacity to kind of show uh, models uh, together, um, analyze them separately, analyze them as an overlay, and you know, potentially even do some level of coordination within the Power BI environment.